Well, today I'm really excited to share with you a lesson that I actually created this lesson about eight years ago, but I decided I just had to include it in this new online class. So I call the lesson Designing Expressive Lines. And the reason I call it that is because using a saute stick and a product that, only one product I found that actually drizzles, and that's this gloss acrylic that you can get, it's made by Apple Barrel and you can get it at Walmart. It's only about 77 cents a bottle. It's a very good deal. And using the saute stick and just pulling this out so it drizzles off the end, you can just design the coolest lines. Thick, thin, wavy. You can actually draw with it too if you want just to add some more interesting expressive lines. But I, th I think it's a truly awesome experience. So first of all, I'm gonna show you how I can drizzle a line. And then I have an, another product called a Gouda bottle. And this Gouda bottle is amazing. It, it's actually designed for the silk industry. So they use some kind of a resist in here and it's got a little top, I'll show you how to put that on. But with the Gouda bottle, you have more control. So you can just simply draw this line continuously or stop and start. You can do all kinds of detail because the control is there. Whereas with the drizzle, eh, it's not a lot of control. I personally prefer the drizzle, <laughs> but now that I've gotten into more intricate drawings, I like having the option that I have more control. So the secret is I frequently use the Gouda bottle when I need the control, maybe to do some of the eyes or some details that are particular. But then I use the drizzle for the rest of it just to get that character of the line. Now this Gouda bottle comes with many, many different tips. And so I'm gonna show you the one I have. This is the actual bottles, and it comes with a little screw-on cover. And a lot of people overlook this, but the tip is also in the bag. So you want to make sure you get the tip on here. So I push it on. I, I actually screw it on, but I don't, I don't think it actually screws on, but I always give it that motion. And then once I get this on, I've got the leverage to lift this off, and it's just simply a matter of... Now I've got the stick in here. Let me get rid of this stick. And this cover comes with a lovely top that you can easily fill this bottle. So see, now it's just a matter of taking whatever color, whatever kind you like. It comes in regular acrylic and it also comes in this gloss, which is the only one that drizzles. So I'm going to put the gloss in here because I like that extra shine anyway. And then it's just a matter of snapping this top on. Now this is tricky. You have to push hard on one side. <laughs> sure it is. And then push on the other and listen for the click. There. So now we're ready to go. And it's just a matter, it's perfect line every time. Love this little bottle. I actually have to thank a gal named Nancy for telling me about it. Now another little addition Nancy told me was it would be a lot of work to take this top off and wash it every time. And of course you have to be careful. You'd want to get a lot of acrylic down your water and sewer system. So she said just buy these pins. And this pin is from Walmart too. And I abs it's kind of tricky getting the pin in but not that hard. So you can just slip the pin in and I just leave it in. And so I can have different colors, you know, white, black, whatever colors I want to use. With the pin in, I just usually tip them on the side to keep that fluid in there. Oh, my outside here. I tip it on its side so that that keeps the fluid acrylic in there and it keeps everything flowing. If you leave it up like this, it could dry out and get stuck. But just pour, put it on its side and it's ready to go anytime you are. 
These little pins are available at Walmart. And what I would do is take the Gouda bottle with me and test the pin to be sure it fits in there. Now, I also couldn't resist not telling you that there are all kinds of products out there that could be used. For example, this is one I just picked up at Cheap Joe's last week, and it's made by Sennelier. And you can see it's got this liquid acrylic in it, and it's got this unit here that you can then put any kind of tip in it you want. Everything from a fine tip to one that makes three lines at once, one that makes a calligraphic line. So there, there are other products out there. I know there are also products out there that come already filled with acrylic and they just have these long dispensing tops. This is another one of those you can fill yourself. Here's another one that you can fill yourself. These are, anytime you hit a craft store, check them out. Here's another one if you're really going to do a lot of drawing. This is pretty cool. It's also got a nice dispensing top. So I don't want you to think the Gouda bottle is the only way to do it. It just happens to be the one that I prefer. Now, another product that just hit the market about, mm, I would say about three years ago, but I could be wrong on that. The gloss acrylic, sometimes this is not available. You know, I've stopped at Walmart many times and they don't have it. So I found out that Golden put out a product called Tar Gel. Honest to God, Tar Gel. And when you put Tar Gel into any acrylic, it will make it so it can drizzle. So that's, I thought that was just some of the coolest news available. Something I always forget to do before I start, but never too late, I've got it out here right now. This is a product called Gloves in a Bottle. And one of the things I like about it is it's, it's a lotion-like moisturizer, but it also coats your skin. So it's like giving you protection from the acrylic. So it gives you this nice little skin. And when it dries, it's easier to clean up the acrylic that's going to eventually be all over your hands. So just in case you didn't know about that product, I wanted to share it with you. Well, I think we're ready to start drizzling. Okay, we're ready to start drizzling. One of my favorite things to do. And of course, after four trips to South Africa, I'm fascinated by all these zebras. And, and something that has that much expressive line, it makes it a very fun subject. So this is what it looks like after it's drizzled. And I'll have to say, when these things are framed up and in they're in the proper, you know, contemporary area, oh my gosh, they look absolutely fabulous. And they do fly out the door, I'll have to say. <laughs> now here's another, another bigger size. This is a 20 by 20. So I take a full 15 by 30. No, I'm sorry, 22 by 30. This is actually 22 by 22. And then I just cut the end, go in 22 inches, and have a lovely big square. And I very seldom paint this particular one. I just, I kind of like it, just the black and white lines. So what we're going to do is we're going to get started. And one of the things I like to do is I like to look at my drawing, first of all, and I, I see where is this eye could use just a little fixing. So remember I said sometimes I use the Gouda bottle? Because of the control. I can come in here and have all this control. I love it. So I can give them some eyelashes. I can give a little bit more depth to that eye. A little expressive line underneath. Same over here. I think this eye, I like to make the eyes extra big. You know, everybody does it little bit bigger eyes again some more expressive lines here under the eyes and then all of these fun things these little lines here it'd be really hard to drizzle those so I'll just take a minute to come in and do some of those and of course these nose lines again I've tried to be a purist and drizzle the whole thing. Ah, bad idea. 
So again, I would just come in and fill these parts in and maybe add a few more interesting shapes here and there. Now, here is, I'll, I'll show you exactly what I mean about having control. In fact, we can move this in. I'll move this in a little closer. And see, I always like to give that white in the eye so it makes it look makes it look like there's the light is bouncing off the eye. And of course we gotta have eyelashes on these rascals. Now it'd be really easy just to come in and do it all with the line, but we're gonna take a chance and we're gonna drizzle these lines. So like I say, do these these little rascals and all the noses with your Gouda bottle. And now let's give it, well, let's, we'll draw a few more of the drizzled lines. I've got a little trick with the drizzled line too. <laughs> so give it a stir. And I have to really think about, okay, I'm gonna start here and work here. So I'm getting my bottle close. When I pull it out, I have to let a little bit of it run off. And then I pop up and it stops drizzling for a minute. You can see it's starting to slow down. Again, I get close. I let a little bit run off and then I jump up. Sometimes I just let the stick do a little bit of it. And the whole thing about this is that thicker and thinner line. See, with the Gouda bottle, it's all the same. And I don't worry if I go outside of my lines because these are just drawn in with pencil and if I miss a few, it's okay. Because after it dries, I erase those lines. I try to get people to think I actually did it all without any pencil lines, but it's not true. So you, you get the gist of it. Just enjoy it. Drop. If it skips a little bit, just say thank you, because to me, that makes it a lot more interesting. So I hope you enjoy the drizzled line. Next, I'm gonna give you a little gallery of some other paintings that I've done using this technique. Well, next I'm gonna share a little gallery where I've used the drizzled line. And here you can see I've used some red, shiny red, and it's always kind of fun to go around, make it into an icon, and do just do some stamping. So these are some ideas I started and I still have yet to do more with them. This one's a piece in progress as well. And you can see, um, I haven't completed it yet, but this is one of those where it's partly drizzled, because you can tell by the thick, thin lines, and it's partly drawn with the Gouda bottle. So I don't have any problem interchanging the two because whatever works, that's what's important. Here's one I started of a, uh, some kind of deer. And another little thing I realized is you can take a sprayer, and I'm gonna show you this a little later, but just taking a fine mister. This is one with a very narrow inner and while the paint is still wet, you can do a little pssst, pssst, and 
it will just move that black into a subtle gray. So all these grays that you see here weren't painted on. I just sprayed it and just held my breath while the paint moved out into these subtle grays. So I'm going to show you that a little later. And this is one of my favorite pieces. It's actually um, a drizzled piece using the gloss white. And I just think it's so much fun. I like to work really wet after I've painted these and just let the color move around. What happens is these lines actually hold back the color. So you can see when I was doing some of the negative painting in the background, it was actually stopped from going into the light areas just by that little ridge of paint. So that's kind of half the fun is, is working with that ridge of paint. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna move into the Gouda bottle. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You gotta see Westy here. This is one of my favorites. I actually have this as a bonus lesson. You get to see this start and finish. And this little guy is Westy. And if you look in here really close, see this? You can tell I drizzled it because it's thick and thin and thick and thin. And I just tried to show the gesture of the lines. In fact, some of this still has the uh, paint on it. I could, uh, sometimes I like to leave the paint on there because I like, I like the uh, grayed down tone. But if, if you get too much, you can also dampen a tissue and just clean that right up. Bring it right back to the white. Well, this is exciting. We're ready to start our roosters on a fence right now. As you can see, I've drawn them in just using my HB pencil. I probably put more detail than I need, but I love to draw. Can't help it. And I, I love the concept. We're going to kind of portray them early in the morning with the sun coming up when they're, when they're out there doing their work, their life's work is to wake everybody up early in the morning. So um, we actually bought the rights to use these copyrighted photos. So I just found three I liked and they're all, do, this, this one isn't, I think that's kind of funny. <laughs> He's taken a rest, but the other two are pretty busy. And so what I'm gonna do is whenever I draw, I always like to have my reference handy because it's just so much wonderful detail. So even though I've drawn this on here, I still like to look at the reference while I'm doing it. Okay, so this will just take a minute. And oh, I just love this little Gouda bottle. It's, it never hesitates, never disappoints me. So it's just a matter of kind of going over the lines and like I say, I don't worry about leaving any pencil lines because before I start, that's all going to be erased. So I'm just trying to capture the, the way those feathers are curling around his body. And then they stick out over here like that. And of course, I love their feet. Oh my. So interesting. Knuckles, toenails. So we'll capture that. And the fence itself isn't a whole bunch of detail, but I did make an effort to make every one of these lines end just a little bit differently than the other. Now his tail's behind the fence, so I'm going to put that part of the fence in first. And when I do this, I try to work, because I'm right-handed, I try to start over here on the left and work my way to the right. So you'll have to reverse that if you're left-handed. So like I said, I knew this wasn't going to take very long. And I, I should mention those saute sticks that I use for the drizzle are easily available at your grocery store 
but I decided, oh, I'd better call my daughter and see if I can get them, get quite a few of them, because I like to give them away when I'm teaching this lesson. <laughs> so I called her up and I was explaining, hey, Renee, you know those sticks that you put, uh, you put meat or chicken on it and, and you, you grill it? She said, Mom, I know what you mean. They're called saute sticks. I said, well, can you get me some of those? She said, yeah, how many do you want? I said, ah, get me, ah, get me two boxes. <laughs> so I'm happy to announce I have 2,000 saute sticks in case you can't find any at the grocery store. Let me know. <laughs> so there you have it. We're gonna let this dry and we're gonna come back and paint these little rascals on the fence. Well, the next thing I wanna do is show you a little gallery of paintings I've done using the Gouda bottle. You know, know how to use it, and but there's some more tricks I can share with you. Now this is one where I did the Gouda bottle with white. And you can see it's really kind of fun because I wet this entire thing. There was no masking used. And as I painted the background, you can see it didn't run in. And that's because this ridge was up so high. Well, the way I did that, was I used different tips on the Gouda bottle. This happens to be a number seven tip. That means it's larger, it allows more of the paint to come out. So you can see these ridges here, it almost looks like I drizzled it, but I didn't. I just used the number seven tip, which is bigger. And this one, you can watch me paint from start to finish in one of the bonus lessons. Now this is just a little fella, isn't he cute? And this one is using both the Gouda bottle that has black in it, and then I have a second Gouda bottle with white in it. And it's really fun because his whiskers needed to be white, and I wanted the drawing part to be black. So, of course, you can interchange colors. Just have a good time. Okay, I'm going to have to admit something here. One of my very favorite subjects throughout this whole Gouda bottle lesson series was giraffes. They, and because of their long neck, I got the idea to put it on a tall vertical. And this, this is pretty cool to know. If you take a full sheet of watercolor paper, so it's 22 by 30, and you cut it at 10 inches, you get three of these rascals out of one full sheet. And that's perfect for this subject. And again, you can see here where I had a little fun with the iconic look where I put this border in and he's breaking into the border. This was also done with a drizzle. And see, my preference is the drizzle because the line is so much more unique. It's just got so much more interest to it. But they're all fun. Here's one I did with the Gouda bottle, more control. And the um, backgrounds, I, sometimes I keep them really simple. Here you can see I did a little color sanding. And here I was really trying to emphasize how tall their necks are. It's, it's unbelievable. When these guys are so friendly, as soon as they see you in the safari truck, they immediately come over and stick their noses right in the truck. Oof. And uh, they're, they're interesting from the front and they're interesting from the side. You can see here again, a little more color sanding just to give it a little more interest. And then this guy, most of these I did with the Gouda bottle, just for the control. But they were all painted very, very wet. I wet the whole thing, and the first layer was always done wet into wet. So you'll notice all of them have the paint kind of oozing out. And you will see that. Here's another one using the Gouda bottle. And I thought I'd mention, this is the one that you get to see me do from start to finish. And you can see it's a drizzle. And you can see all the colors oozing out. Oh, it's so much fun to paint. And I have another little funny story I have to tell. Um, I have a lot of students that come year after year after year. And they come home and they can't wait to share their paintings with their family. And this one gal called me up after she got home and she said, Carlin, I can't wait to tell you. I showed my granddaughter the giraffe that I painted. And she said, oh, Grandma, you really can paint. <laughs> she didn't like all those abstracts, she didn't. 
<laughs> I thought that was great. So to complete our gallery, I have a couple more here. This one is really fun. This is available as a kit. And you can do it, you can have it printed on Arches paper as a quarter sheet, or you can just have the drawing and do a half sheet. This is not finished, but it's just such a great subject. These are the guys, they stick their nose over the fence at the Bunratty Folk Park over in Ireland. And they're just, again, really friendly. They just come right up to you. I just love it. And this one was a little ambitious, but you know what? I had a great time painting this. You can see how I did it totally wet into wet. And when I painted these stripes, I did um, a warm to cool, starting with the, the under the belly where I wanted more shade, coming out into two, three different colors. In fact, I'm gonna show you how to paint one of these little rascals next. But I also had a good time here. If you look in the sky, I actually painted in what looks like more stripes. I just just thought it would be all part of the expressive experience of painting with these lines. So let me get, get to the next step and show you how to paint one of these rascals. Well, we have our friendly little zebras here. One of the things that's so cute about these guys is they, they're always touching each other. They're snuggling all the time. And I, I found this particularly attractive where this little guy, he's, he's knocking down the mane. So if you're wondering what this is, he doesn't have a beard. <laughs> it's actually the, I guess you would call it a mane, and it's pressed down here. And the interesting thing, these stripes, when you're coming up with the dark, that's where it's dark on the main, and then it's light in between. So a lot of people didn't notice that when they were doing it. And you can see the wet into wet, all the color running out into each other. That's what I like. So we're gonna start by wetting the back and then the front. And wet the back really good because that's going to keep it wet longer. And then we're going to wet the front. And what I forgot to do, that's well, not something I mentioned. It's a good idea to, well, I'm not going to worry about it. But I do like to erase the pencil lines. Now, if you're working from a kit, and this will be available in a kit, you won't be able to erase those lines. So you might want to be more careful when you're putting them on. But I usually work from my own pencil lines and it's not a problem, I can just erase them. So I'm just gonna have some fun. I know these guys are generally black and white, but too bad, I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna start, first of all, with their fun beaks here, which are usually a warm color anyway. This is some quinacridone burnt orange. So I'm going to come in with a little warm color right on their beaks. But I'm going to save the light of their nose. And they, it looks nice to save a little light here under, underneath. And I always like to give a, a little bit of warm color in the ears. so. We'll give where we can see in the ears we're going to put a little bit of red and using just a little bit of cobalt blue I think it would be good just to come in and give them just a little bit of shadow under the eye maybe a little bit of shadow over here and just a touch of shadow coming in here So a little cobalt, and then I usually paint that nose dark. I missed that, I see. So I'm just going to give them a little bit of darker tone there. And then I'm just going to give it a final nice bright orange. Oh, I love that color.
Now when it comes to painting this, these stripes, what I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm going to make sure I'm on a stripe. Once I start, it's okay. It's every other one. So I'm going to start here with some Quinn Gold and pretty much just go right down the line with the gold starting in the center. If it runs into the inside, that's good. See, gold is a color that doesn't move that much. So I don't expect it to go too far. Now I'm going to put in the orange up here into the main. One time I taught this at Jerry's Artorama and it was amazing to be we, we had purple zebras and we had green and blue. Oh gosh, they were incredible. It was really it was really fun. And see, you get a few of those little things, don't worry about it. It's half the fun. Now I'm going to do the same thing here. It's always nice. I'll look at my photograph and decide which, that'll be white. So now I'm going to start doing every other one. go with a little bit richer paint. My paint was a little bit lean, so I'm going to give it a little bit richer. You can see it ran out quite a bit. Now I'm going to go into the orange. And we'll join the orange all the way up here. Oh, this is fun. Now he's got a little orange color up here too. And over here. Well, not really. It's supposed to be black, but I, I'm, make, he's, I'm making an orange zebra. Same here now. We have to decide which one is going to be. Going back to the gold. And I'm going to start doing every other one. Let's do this one. And of course we know it's in the stripe, so we'll pull that up. And now I'm going to go into the Quinn Burnt Orange to finish that. So we're going from gold to orange. And we need just a little bit of that color up in the ears. Now in terms of the color up here, same thing. We're going to go with the Quinn Burnt Orange mostly. But we're also going to come in and give it a few extra. But see, my paper's getting dry already. Using my fine mister and holding it high, I can keep this nice wet look. But you don't point and shoot. See, it has to be a movement. I like this so much better. All 
right, back to the orange, Quinburnt orange. And same over here. Now I still want to add some cool underneath. If this isn't a very clear picture, but you can definitely see that it would be nice to add a little bit of shadow under the belly there. And of course I need to add some more orange on this hair. So I'm going to come in with just a little bit of cobalt blue. And I'm going to start down here. And go right into the orange and just let it give us a little bit of that nice underbelly feel. Might do a little bit of it up here too. And a little bit over on this side. Now I have to make a big decision about what color I want to do this, the background. I still want to have some more soft areas here. So check everything. Make sure you're getting... See, this is so clean in here. Eh, I want it to move. Come on. Do a little move in there. I might even come in with more color. So it'll move a little more. Yes. And see, I like it really nice. I, I really like it warm. I'm going to put some more warm color down here. You can see it turned quite gray when I added the blue because that's the complementary color. But I still needed that gray. I wanted it darker on the edges. So this is really, really wet. I like, I like all this stuff bleeding out. <laughs> now if I want to go darker, I can take a combination of some Quin Burnt Orange and our Cobalt Blue. And you can see it'll give us a nice deep brown. So if I want to come in here and just add a few little dark accents I think that would be in order. And maybe just a few more darker stripes here and there. And of course when this is dry I can come in and give it some extra darks if I need it. But try to save as many of these white whites as you can. Like, I love this under here. <clears throat> I love it around the noses. So, so far, I'm happy. I think I'm going to give it a cool background for the sky. <clears throat> One of my favorite colors is manganese blue. And the nice thing about manganese is it doesn't move much in water. So if I want to just put a little cool color, a little blue cool, coming around here, <clears throat> can do that. See I didn't even bother going where that where this had come out because I, I like that so much I don't want to lose it. So I'm just gonna put a little blue here and there <clears throat> so that the zebra comes forward and the blue is gonna push it back in the white back into the background here. I see I have a piece of tape here. <laughs> I was just saving that for you. I forgot to take the tape off. There you go. I really don't think I'm going to have much more to do to this later, but we will take a look at it after it dries and see if it needs just another little tweak. All right. Hope you enjoy it. Well, remember I told you I had another little trick to share with you? 
about this Gouda bottle. Before, uh, before I showed you that I used a bigger tip, a number seven, when I wanted a lot of paint, especially when I was doing the florals and I wanted that paint to hold back the negative painting. Well, now I've switched to a smaller tip. This is a number five. And what I figured out one day is I can make these beautiful gray tones with just a little of my fine mister. Now remember it has to be a fine mister. It has to have a very narrow inner so that when the mist comes out, it's just very fine. So now looking at this little rascal here, I'm gonna just come in and start putting in some of these lines. So I'm drawing with this like it was a pencil. Whatever I see, that's what I'm gonna draw. And as it comes around here, it's down here. Now I couldn't draw this whole thing and then spray it. One of the things you have to remember is this is such a fine line. It's drying right now as we speak. So what I'm going to do is just do a few more of these, get out my sprayer, and give it a swipe. And this is just risky. I mean, you just do it, and you think nothing is happening. But here's the trick. That paint is going from one dot to the next dot to the next dot. So you can't overspray. I'm going to move in close so you can see exactly what's happening here. Right now, you can see it. it's really lovely. It's just starting to move a little bit. Actually, I want it to appear too. So I'm just going to give it one more little shot. And very often I'll even come in and do a little bit more while while the spray is sitting there. Oh, you can see I'm getting some nice grays in here. Love it. I actually want a little bit more gray in here. So I'm going to say, just give it a little more spray exactly where I want it. If you get too much, you can always come in and lift it away. Now I'm going to come down here. I'll just do a little bit more. See, now my surface is wet, so I do have to be careful. It's sort of doing its own thing. See, I want it to be wispy like this, but I can get those strong lines if I want to. But I was just kind of dot and pull, dot and pull. And now we just need a few more of these wispy lines down here. And to me, it's amazing. It's almost photographic. Uh. Now, I still want more grays through here. So I'm going to spray. And then I have to wait because it takes time for that to move in the dots. Don't get, don't get excited. Let it, just let it do it on its own time. So now you can see it will go from this to this. And I found that so exciting that I did a whole series of paintings using this draw with the Gouda bottle. Remember now, it's number five tip. And then a fine mist to spray and to get these very soft edges. And you can do, oh, it's wonderful. Birch trees, anything you like. 
I've got some more here that I really, really love. This, I think this is just a phenomenal picture. Uh, one of my students, it's her cat. She shared the picture with me. And you can see the beautiful markings on, on this rascal. And look at just the beautiful coloring, the grays, the blues, that really intense blue in the eye. And then these, this dominance of warm over here. So it was really fun to draw this. And then, of course, I got the white Gouda bottle out to put in some of the extra whiskers that were white. And then, just to come in and add the color afterwards. And this one is available as, um, you can watch me paint this from start to end. It's really, I think, pretty cool. And look it up here. I started the Gouda bottle here and pulled it out because I wanted it just a little bit heavier at the end of the line. So it, whenever you start a Gouda line, it usually starts thicker and then pull it out. So I didn't go back and forth. I started, pulled, started, pulled, started, pulled. And I do that for most of the whiskers because they're always a little thicker. You can see it along here too. I start here and pull it out. And cats are fabulous. Look at that little cutie. Oh. So I hope you enjoy this Gouda bottle as much as I have. Now here you can see the same lion, again giving it kind of that icon look and breaking out. So it's a nice combination of lost and found edges with the underpainting being very much pure color, blue on top of the orange, uh, just to gray it down. Some of the white Gouda lines, the black Gouda lines. And then this is actually, um, I took a stamp and just stamped it around. So it's a repetitive stamp, just to give it some texture. And for my last three Gouda bottle lines that I also added the soft grays, uh, this, is, I, this is a beautiful scene in Umbria. I can remember standing here and just drawing this with the Gouda bottle and spraying into it. And I still haven't gotten back to finish it, but I will. Here's another one from Greece. And this one I decided to only spray into the foliage, just to give that softness. And I'm because the, it, they're so clean, all these shapes in Greece, they're just so clean. I didn't wanna dirty up those lines. And this is a scene just from down here at our waterfront. And I did only a little bit of spraying into some of the bolts there. So this leads us up to our three roosters on a fence. And one of the things that's really important is to clean up the lines. So I'm just gonna take a minute with my eraser. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but I just, I don't like to have pencil lines that aren't necessary because once you wet them, you can't erase them. I'm sure you've all figured that out. So this would be a good time to give you a little pitch for this particular eraser. This is called the Oops Eraser. And it actually erases lines quite well after they've been wet. But I don't want to take a chance. So I'm just going to take and clean it up before we start. Just takes a minute. There it is. We're ready to go. Now, because I want to do a wet into wet, I'm going to start by wetting the back. And because this is a full half sheet, it's a pretty good size, I'm going to use my four inch hockey brush to wet the paper. It does such a good job of wetting. And I do want it really, really wet. So we'll start in the back, flip it over. And I'm starting to think now about some beautiful early morning colors. Hmm. Something bright. So always be sure every part is wet. When you're gonna do these really wet into wet 
washes. If you miss a little spot, it'll go into the dry paper and you'll get a stain that you can't remove. So it is a good idea to make. I love those hockey brushes. So we're ready to start. And I'm, th I'm thinking about a nice triad here. I always like to keep my paint nice and wet. So I always give it a good spray just before I start. Now just in case some of the colors would stain my little roosters, I'm going to use non-staining colors in my triad. So I'm going to start with some bright areolan yellow. This is a fabulous color. It's not only very primary, it doesn't stain. And I'm also going to take some Quin Coral. Same thing, non-staining, but nice and bright. And then for my third color, I'm going to use Cobalt Blue, which is absolutely gorgeous. And that's going to create a nice early morning feel. So we're going to start with the Areolan. And I'm going to put it right over this top of the fence here. Now these guys are not protected by masking. It's not necessary. They're pretty dark. And I want to pull that yellow up pretty high. And I want it to be pretty intense. I think it's kind of fun. Oops, can't forget there. Now the next thing I'm going to do is go into my Twin Coral. And this is the what we call the buffer color. So in between the yellow and the blue, you have to have a buffer color. And this is going to be our Quin Coral. Oh, we've got red next to red. That's, that's okay. Now I know some of this color is going to go inside. I'm not worried about it. Whatever color's here, I try to pull it over here. Same here. So this color's got to come out on the other side. Okay, now we're going to do our cobalt blue. And that's going to come down from the top. Just the pure cobalt. Oh, did you see how I started going back and forth? Uh -uh. Think about the movement. Have it coming in. Because we're going to now let these colors get to know each other. A little tipping and turning. Looks pretty awful right now. So it's going to need some additional spray. This is one of the things about these colors. You think that they're... going to blend. The paper was so wet, but they don't. So we have to use a little gravity and we also have to use a little spray. So come on, start moving. I want the red to run into the yellow and I want the blue to run into the red. And I actually wouldn't mind having a little bit of this red showing up down here what I call bookending. So now we're going to tip it the other way. I'll turn it around like this. And now I'm mostly spraying where the two overlap. It's amazing to me how little movement we're getting. <laughs> What's that all about? I see I, when I erased, I actually kind of damaged the paper a little bit too. That's kind of interesting. <laughs> You'd think after all these years I'd know what's going on. Okay, now we're going to finally let it move this way. 
And it takes quite a while for this blending to happen. And back. Can you see how the colors are finally starting to meld together? And I'm actually going to gather up a little bit of this extra color down here. So that when I tip it back, hmm. so there's our attempt at early morning. Now using a flat one inch brush, I can lift color out that went into our roosters, but hardly any it went in. I don't even, I'm not too worried about any of it actually. I'm thinking I might want to get a little more red in the sky here. And I very seldom do this, but I'm going to I'm just going to add a little bit more here. And as soon as you do that, it seems like a good idea, but as soon as you do that, you have to start moving it again. First that way, then this way. And see, this is what I want. I want to. I want to get more more variety in that sky. Oh yeah, this is gonna be better. I even had a little dry spot there that I have to rub. Now, when the paper gets wet, you all know this. It stretches. So what I have to do is I have to pick this up and set it down again. And, yeah, that's kind of fun. Now I'm ready to start tackling in some color. Ooh. So I'm going to get out my reference. And the first thing I want to do is get some of these nice bright colors on him. Look at that. They're, some pure yellow. See, at this point, I'm going to do all pure color. Wherever I see this pure color, that's where I'm going to put it. This little rascal has got some beautiful pure color in here. Let's just put it in. Maybe one little shot there. Ah, this guy doesn't have much pure yellow. Maybe a little bit in the mouth. And that's all. Now I'm going to go into some pure Quinn gold. And I see a little bit of that up here around his head. And it looks like I could put a little in through his feathers here. Notice how when I paint these, I leave a lot of white. Don't just come in with a big stroke that's going to wipe out all your whites. You want to save as many of those whites as you can. And I actually see some golden tones in the in the feathers here too and it, probably the top of his little claws would be nice here too we've got some nice pure golden colors here and there in fact I could go into the gold as we're moving up here so I love working with pure color and mixing it on the paper This fellow here, too, has got a lot of gold up here. A little bit down here. Ooh, he's got some down here. A little bit over here. Now look at those beautiful blues. Oh my goodness. I'm going to use my manganese for that. It just looks like it should it should be kind of that nice bright greeny blue. So I'll just pick a few feathers here. I'm gonna make them blue. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> so I'm basically working light to dark. 
I actually see a little blue back here too. Over here I see a little bit of blue tone in here and I'm going to be putting some warm over that later. really see much in here. Not to worry about him. Now I'm going to go into my quinacridone burnt orange. And see I'm applying all this with a relatively small brush. This is just a little number eight. And I like that it gives me a lot of control. So now I'm going to think about some of these colors guy's got quite a bit of Quinn burnt orange on him. So we should be able to get these feathers going. Now the fun part is to come later and that's when we come in with the real strong darks. So we're just built, just taking our time here building up. Anytime I see a few little tones in there I'm just gonna put it in. Because see, I also want these colors to bleed out. I want this to look really wet into wet. So again, we're just going to add these feathers here. They're going to be much darker later, but for now, we just want them mid-tone. Now up here, this is an unusual color. It's not, it's almost like a yellow mixed in with my Quinn burnt orange. It's kind of an orangey color. So that's what I did. I just mixed a little bright primary yellow in with my Quinn burnt orange just to give those feathers a little. Now the good news, all the while we're doing this, the paper's getting drier. Now I could even lift out some color here. Look at how light those are. I'm going to take my lifting brush and lift out some of these colors. Any place I got a little bit too dark, I'm going to lift it out. Oh, and this one's got a lot of beautiful Quinn burnt orange on it. Just the pure color. So starting up here. Coming down. This is pretty much Quinn burnt orange. And I'm going to add a little red to it. I'm going to warm it up. Ooh, yeah. Good idea. Put a little red over here, too. Nice. I'm going to put some pure red over here. Because see, we're going to be putting red into his... I don't want to get too much red up there yet because I don't want it to bleed all over. I want to get most of the red in there when, when it's drier. But I can't wait. I want to see a little red right now. So I'm put a little bit in. Cool. So I'm wondering if I can't add just a little bit more red in this guy. And let's take a look at this guy. Don't see much red. I think I'll just wait. So now comes the best part. We're gonna start putting in the darks. And when you want to do dark, you've got several choices. 
if you want to be really brave and go with a staining color, you can go with Windsor Green and Alizarin Crimson. These two colors make the blackest black you can make. And they also make a transparent black. In other words, when this dries, it's really still really black. A lot of people will take like their indigo and they'll say, oh, that's, that's black enough. But the trouble with indigo is there's white in it and when it dries, there goes your black. Now you're back to gray. So no indigo, not allowed. But let's say you're not real sure of yourself. Oops. Let's say you're not real sure of yourself. You could also use quinacridone burnt orange and French ultramarine blue. And these two colors make a black. It takes a lot of French ultramarine blue. But it also makes a very strong black. And the good news about this black is it's liftable. If you do something you don't like, you can take it away. But I'm going to get really brave. I'm going to use the staining black because I want that strong black transparency. So let's start with this, this guy. Remember, it's Windsor Green and Alizarin Crimson. So starting in here now, and this color really moves in water. So I'm, I'm mostly going to use this color where I know it's going to move. So if I just tuck a little bit in here and there on these feathers, I know it's going to move. And most of this black I'm going to have to put on after it dries. Because I can't, I don't want all this color to move. I'm also going to switch now to a little bit smaller brush. This is my script brush and it's going to give me more control. I can see that it's really moving on me. So I'm going to lift out just a bit. So we're just going to have fun now. I'm looking especially for areas where it's very soft. And then I'll put in those really crisp areas when the paper's dry. So right now, see those nice tonal washes in there? That's what I'm going to put in. Cute little rascal. And then around here, I'm going to tuck in some of those soft darks. Because these two colors really move in water. I mean, I'm not kidding. They really move in water. So you don't want to do all your darks yet. This is fun. One thing I like about the script brush is it holds so much paint. See, I can just start tucking in these little corners and I can go and go and go. It's like the ever ready battery, it just never runs out. So I gotta juice up my green again. French, nope. So I'm gonna juice up these colors. Alizarin Crimson, Thalo Green. I'm gonna switch to this little rascal. Ooh, he's got this really beautiful dark tail. So you can see what's happening. The edges stay soft because the paper is still so wet. Oh yeah, 
And I like a few of those little whites in there. Don't get too flat. Just leave some of those whites. Oh, this is good. My paper is starting to dry a little bit. Tuck in a few darks here. The dark eye. <laughs> a little dark here and there. Actually, this tail is coming over here. And now we can just tuck in these darks. Oh, fun. I always try to make the strokes in the direction of the feather. I'm always thinking about this. What direction is that? because there's layers of feathers over layers of feathers. And then I like this dark up here. Ah, coming along. I just have a feeling he's the loudest one here. We're gonna get some more darks in here. Here. See, it's still pretty wet. So I like that I can just add these darks in here. Especially his tummy area down here. It's really dark. And these, this is really dark down here. And there's some lovely darks in and out of here. on first. Too many feathers. I like the way these feathers come over the fence here. It's pretty cool. I probably could go to a bigger brush, but I'm just more comfortable with my little script. And see all those beautiful colors? They're not going to get wasted. They're still glowing through. I love it. So one of the things that appeals to me are these interesting shapes down here. So I'm going to try to capture that fact that there's interesting patterns here. <laughs> A few little darks here and there. good. Now this is getting a little drier so I'm going to come in with some of these final darks because I really want the sky to stand out. The darker I can make these guys against that light sun, sunny background the better. <clears throat> And some of these feathers are much darker. See, we want to, we do want to capture that.
I love all those colors that are under there. So I'm kind of careful not to lose too much. <clears throat> Well, it's almost time to let this dry, but I still want to get some of these very, very dark feathers here so that he reads as a very dark chicken on the fence. So we're going to let this dry now. When I come back, we'll pop in some of those really bright colors, the reds, and I'm going to show you how to do a little dry brush on the fence and we'll be all done. Thanks. Okay, we're ready. I dried this. It's not real dry, but it's dry enough. So now I'm ready just to come in in between dry brush and clean, hard, crisp edges. We should be, we should be doing just fine. So I'm going to come in, just add a few more real dry. I'm using the same mixture of Windsor Green and Alizarin Crimson and now this time I'm just going to come in here and fuss a little bit. I'm sure you've noticed that from time to time I break out with kind of a dry brush look. And I think that's important because these are feathers and we want to make them look as feathery as we can. So some I leave very crisp and others I break out into kind of a soft feathery look. Now if you want to make anything brighter, <clears throat> why not? Could come in with some more brighter reds. I could come in with some. I noticed um, if you look at his head, see that red seems to seep right down into his neck. So I'm going to take the brightest red I have. This is Scarlet Lake. And I'm going to paint his waddle. Is that his waddle? Uh oh, I should have checked this out. <laughs> His comb. His comb. I got a little help from Jonas. I didn't think it was right. This is called his comb. And so I'm using Scarlet Lake. Oh, it's beautiful. And I want to give him a little ring of that red around his eye down in here. I should be careful. See, I'm actually going to leave a little bit of that <clears throat> white on there. And then I'm going to take a little bit of this red and just kind of pull it down his neckline. Just because I like that look. So again, I'm going into kind of a dry brush here. My paper's dry. So I just start with it. And then as I pull it along, I'm getting that dry brush. Love that. That's good. So we'll move from chicken to chicken. We'll get his comb a little brighter. Not. 
But again, I'm going to leave just a little bit of white in there. And we'll come down here and get his waddle. Much brighter here. Much brighter under here. We'll give him a little bit of red around his eye too. And I'm going to put this in his mouth. And see, I don't want to leave that edge hard, but I do want to leave those lights. So I'm just going to soften that edge with a slightly damp brush. Just lose it. And he actually needs more red up here. There's quite a bit of red in his face, so I'm going to just smear a little of that around. This is a bright red out here. And it wouldn't hurt just to pull a little bit of that dry brush red down here too. Using my script brush again. And our last little rascal. Okay, you can see this guy's face is just a little bit too white. Let's give him a little bit of that red color. Oops. We'll give him a red beak too. And see, I try to stay away from making him too solid. I like a little bit of glow of that light. I like the white eye. Even though it's not quite white, I'm going to leave it pretty white. Now this guy's lips are actually yellow, so I'm just going to do it. I'm going to put some primary yellow on here for his lips. And all their beaks can go a little bit yellow. Very cool. Well, our very last death-defying act here is to take some Quinn Burnt Orange and some, ooh, keep dripping on my picture. I'm going to move my water down closer to my fence. Oh my goodness. I am. See, when you have a beautiful graded wash like that, You've got to protect it because anything, any water that lands on it, especially when it's wet, it's going to get you in trouble. So back to our fence. We're going to take some Quinn Burnt Orange and I'm going to get that all ready to go and some Cobalt Blue. And I know that those two colors, when they're mixed together, are going to give me a nice warm brown. So I'll take a little bit of this and mix it in here. Oh yeah, perfect. And then if I need it really dark, there it is. So we've got like three values, the pure color, the gray version, and the dark dark. So we're gonna get started here. What I want to do is I just want to get the top of the fence kind of warm, brownie, wood, and I'm just going to let it roll down to the light color. So we're just going to make every one a little different.
And then I'm going to make some of them darker. Almost like a shadow. And then as I pull it out here, I'm going to go into a dry brush, which is going to show some of that white paper coming through. So again, we're going to start each, each one here. I'm going to add some water, lose the edges. And I'm going to come in and make it a little darker, like a shadow. And then I'm going to go into this gray. <coughs> so I'm going to have some areas of the fence cooler some warmer oh let's finish down here so you notice I never did wet the fence I just started dry on the dry paper. Now I'm coming in from the bottom, losing that edge. Now I'm going to make it darker. Here, warmer here, cooler here. So just a nice variety. Now remember that dark color I mixed? You saw me use just these two colors. Now I'm going to go into this darker color. And we're going to catch a few of these. Now remember you got to go sometimes high, sometimes low. Keep it variety, variety. Go a little darker under here. Now the last thing I'm going to do is take my flat one inch brush and I'm going to mix some more blue and I'll mix the two together into a nice mid-tone brown whenever you do this you want to practice see how this is dry brush and <clears throat> what I think would be cool would be just to add a little bit of this dry brush look here and there but it actually should be dry the paper itself should be dry to do this So I think I'll just lose these edges and wait a minute. I'm also going to add just a little bit of salt. I can never contain myself when it comes to texture. I just love 
little broken shapes. We'll see what happens. So other than adding a little dry brush onto the fence later, we basically have our roosters waking everybody up in the morning. And I, I hope you'll try this. We do have this available. All you have to do is click here. It'll download the drawing and you'll also get the photographs. And remember, I bought the copyright to use these. So when you finish your painting, you'll be able to sell it and enjoy it. Thank you. <laughs> Guess what, I'm back again. Just realized we didn't paint his poor little feet. So I'm going to take quinacridone gold. And this is kind of perfect, I think, for his feet. Because I like them light. So I'm going to get the gold in here. But I have to go a little bit darker. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit of that orange while it's still wet and see how it rolls around and it makes him feel like he's feet are round. We like that. So just a little bit darker, but just on the back side here. And then we're gonna leave the feet light against the fence. And these guys don't know, oh, he's got some feet here too. What I'm gonna do here is wet these and just come in with a little bit of the red quinburnt orange, sorry, on each, just on the side. Now I'm gonna try just for a little bit of the dry brush. And remember, whenever the best way to do dry brush is first of all you load your brush up and I'm just using Quinn burnt orange with a little cobalt in it and then you can never go directly on your paper you have to practice first and get it down until the brush is what we call dry brush see and it's just leaving those shapes so I'm just gonna pull a few of those shapes here and there not everywhere just here and there so it looks like an old fence and I was really quite happy with what happened with the salt I don't know if you can see it I'll come in close so you can see it so there you can see a little bit of the dry brush effect And I think I'll just add a little bit more. I used to think that a flat brush would do a better job, but really the best is this round brush used in this position. Perfect. So we got some of the uneven whites here, some lovely little salt effect. I should have done more, but I'm happy with just that little bit. And now we've got a little bit of the dry brush effect here. We'll back it out and I promise this is the end. How fun was that?